Hi everyone, we are going to do part three of this picture today. Um, I quite fancied doing this little wooden tub and the veggies. So um, we're going to get going. I'm still using my Castle Arts Botanical set that are here beside me. Let's push this up a little bit into shot. Okay, so wood. Um, I quite like colouring wood, I find it quite fun. Now with this wooden container, we have a little tiny layer on the top of dark soil. Now I'm going to do that first just because I need to make sure that it isn't lost when I do the wood. So I'm going to start with a layer of burnt umber, but I may add some black. Now with soil, I always do little circular motion and sort of emphasise that circular motion so it does look a bit scruffy so you've got bits of white in there because soil isn't a constant colour so it's uh, I can see paper through um, I don't know how well you can see as I'm zoomed out and uh, it's quite rough and that's the idea because the soil isn't going to be a completely flat colour so just having fun scribbling along here really and while you go along you have a little look at what's in the tub we've got um let they've oh, got the cabbage i'm sorry not lettuce here yeah. <laughs> got what looks like carrots at the beginning and then maybe turnips i never know what these are parsnips don't know so we can have a play with coloring those in later so there's our soil just darkening up there now what you can do as well is grab a black this is the ivory black that's what i get in this set i don't know if there are other blacks in castle arts or if ivory black is it just sharpening and i'm just going to think about where there might be a little bit of shadow under the cabbage and it's going to be a little bit darker let's just add a little bit of darker color there maybe under the veg a little bit just here and there we've got that label as well which is fun and my neighbor is playing the piano i don't know if you can hear it but uh, hopefully um, it'll be okay now for the base of the wood i'm going to use some more umber now with wood i try and color in the direction that i think the wood grain would be so for this piece it's going to be horizontal so I'm going to color in horizontal lines now I'm not leaving really obvious lines in the work in the but um, you just want to make it directional like that it doesn't need to be that even or neat because I think about this could be a, a box made of pallet wood or something like that. It might not be perfectly neat and tidy. And then we have this diagonal one. So I'm going to use a diagonal stroke. Um, I'm just trying to work out what's going on here. I think that is all um, the sort of stems of the leaves. So you can colour over those. I know when Chris Chang does her videos, which are amazing by the way, do check them out, um, she will leave a little space for the stem and then colour it in a green. So next to where the black is, she'll leave a tiny, tiny gap and colour it in the colour of the leaf. But um, I'm afraid that when I follow her videos and do a colour on, which I do at times, I haven't done one for ages, I tend to not notice that and do it wrong. So we're going to do a vertical stripe all along here because uh, it's so little because I watch her a bit, I pause it, I colour a bit, I pause it and uh, what I find tricky is she misses bits out. So she'll do a flower and use a dozen colours and then you then another and then another and then suddenly you notice that there's two or three other flowers that have been completed using those dozen colours and you've got to try and remember how she did the first one and copy them. What I tend to do is I've learned that she does this. So I try and keep in mind which ones are the same as each other and assume that she is only going to give instruction for one. And then when I do one, I 
do the others straight after so that I remember what I've been using. I've still got those pencils out. Because for me, because I don't have polychromo, um, Prismacolors, which she uses, I use my polychromos, I have to do the colour conversion for all the for all of them as well. So if I've done that pick that particular item and put all those colours away, I can't I have to do that again as well. It takes time. There's just a little tip that I've learned while I'm doing her videos is just to try and note which one she does the same and then you can do them alongside each other it makes it much more much easier I find but I think her videos are definitely for more advanced colorists um, it's lovely to look at her work and take tips she's does beautiful beautiful things but I find that if she if her video is an hour it takes me four to six hours to complete that particular <laughs> it's a train I don't know if you could hear that um, it takes me four to six hours to do an hour so it's a long time and I'm not a slow colorist I'm, I think I'm pretty fast so I just have to make sure I'm in the right mindset and I have the right amount of time to commit to that but the results are astonishing and I do it really does improve my work when I color along with someone so uh, that's good but as I say, I haven't done it for ages been making my own videos which is fun and also I don't want to copy other people obviously everything I do I've learned and I'm not a lot is self-taught and I can't always remember where I learned it but um, it's, it's something that I most of the techniques are things I've been doing for a long time so I've sort of adapted them and changed them to my own way you know but I wouldn't want to do something and it was exactly the same as someone else's unless I could remember who it was and um, credit them, which is what I did with um, my Acorn video where I did it. I actually had Helen Allison's book open and did the tutorial from her book. Um, she gave me permission to do that because she. Um, I asked her if I could... Um, having bought the book and reviewed it, my very first video that I made where I spoke was a review of one of her books. It's really scary. Not the book. <laughs> the book's not scary. No, doing the review was really scary. So I've got a basic here. And you can see here I've got these lines where I've overcoloured a bit. I don't care. It's wood. I'm quite happy with that. I've got my burnt umber and I'm going to do a few details. As I say, I have to be careful with this bit at the top. So I don't want to um, go up there, but what I'm going to do is do a little bit of shadow underneath here. Now what I'm trying to do, and it's a little tricky, is to colour on top of Johanna's black line and a little bit below. And I want this top piece of wood to just look like it's nailed on top of the rest. So like a whole box is made from these pieces first and then this has been put across and diagonally just to hold it all together and so we're going to put a line under here as well so it just looks like it's on the top now unfortunately we haven't quite created that illusion very well because the um the planks that are underneath are actually lighter than the ones on the top and you would expect the opposite to be the case so what I am going to do now is go back over all the planks with the raw umber and darken them up. I'm going to sharpen it, it's quite blunt. If your pencil is sharper, it gives a better colour. So I'm going to think about where it might be darker. I'm going to be darker here. And I and actually emphasise some lines in it now to make it look a bit more wood grainy, do you see? And uh, do the same here. So I'm just drawing in some darker lines here and there. What we will do is go over these in between lines in our darker brown in a minute as well. In between lines, that's obviously what they're called. And then actually the gaps between the planks, aren't they? Because they would be quite dark. And we're sort of colouring over them at the minute and, and lightening them up a bit. So we can go back over and emphasise them. Now I could do this on the other two planks as well, but I will probably do it in a lighter brown, so they look slightly lighter. 
I think I'm going to do all the ones above the plank and then all the ones under. I think it'd just be a little bit easier for me to do it that way. I don't know why, it just feels easier. Sometimes you just got to go with what feels right. Now something I have been noticing that people ask from time to time, not necessarily to me but just generally, is you know how do you decide where to start on a colouring page? And it's a really good question. Picking the page is was a whole different question to answer. But once you've got a page, where do you start? Well, I have a. I will often start with something really small. So this page, I might start with a cabbage, you know, something like that. I tend to. I don't plan hugely when I start a page. Sometimes I think about if I want a limited colour palette, when there's something like this, which the picture tells you the colours pretty much, I don't think a limited palette necessarily work. But if it's something a bit more whimsical or a bit more um, um, less realistic, should I say, although I've done, I have done um, um, limited palettes on more realistic pictures too. Like if there's buildings, I might do all the buildings the same colour or something like that. So decide first. I mean, my first decision is what set of pencils. Do I use mixed or do I use a particular set? When I make a video, I tend to use the same set just because I think it's easier for you guys. But uh, then I, I, so I think about what colours I think I might want and which set has those colours. I'm actually going to take my burnt umber and do a dark line on top of the plank as well. I'm going to try and make it a bit less dark than the one on the underneath, but it might be difficult to uh, do that. I think it would just add to the 3D effect of it. And then we're going to do our lines on the bottom half. It's quite tricky when there's only a small amount of space like on these, but I can do it. Anyway, so yes, I might think about colour palettes. I will think about background, probably. Am I going to do one or not? Am I going to do it at the beginning or at the end? And can I decide what colour it's going to be? Do I need to decide first? And then... Um, and then I will pick out somewhere to start. And I usually pick out an element that has stood out to, to me, which is why I picked the page or um, something like that. With this page, the reason I started with the tree in my first video in this series was because I didn't think I demonstrated branches to you before. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do. And then once I got going, I thought I might as well do other bits of the page as well. But I was only intending on doing one video and just doing the tree to start with, you see. So that's why I started there. Had um, I not been um, filming, I would have probably done maybe these first or maybe the pots, perhaps. So uh, it, I have a slightly different approach. I just do bits I like. I don't. I try not to leave the most daunting, daunting bits to the end. I was doing a Rita Berman page, a double page, the other day, and the background of the sky, and I needed to do it, so I did it first, because I knew that if I left it till last, I would probably just not do it, or I would probably do something with a bit of pastel that didn't look as nice as I felt I wanted it to look. So I started with the sky. Also, there are a lot of things against the sky in the picture. So I needed to make sure it was done so that I could choose the colours for those without it interfering with the sky. So, uh, so that is me. Um, people will also often say, how do you choose a page or a book? OK, um, think about what you're in the mood for colouring. Um, think about what you want to colour with, pen, pencil, etc. And that might help you to choose the picture. But if you, that doesn't help you, um, <clears throat> my advice would be to run your finger along your shelf of books and just run it back and forth, maybe count to three and stop and pick that book out and then flick, count to three, stop, 
pick that page or ask someone to help you. I'm going to get the yellow ochre and do the stripes on this one and this one with that with the lighter colour. So instead of using a darker colour on here, I'm using a lighter colour because I want this to stand out a little bit more, look further forward on the page. So um, it can be quite there in the colouring group I'm in, which is um, Johanna Basford Your Pages on Facebook. Um, there was the husband challenge going on, which was quite fun. It was an unofficial um, challenge and it was to ask the husband to pick, I think it was three or five colours and a picture and off you went. I think some husbands were quite kind, <laughs> some were less so. Also, I think some didn't think about how hard it might be to uh, do what they were trying to suggest. Okay, now I have almost finished that. I'd quite like to do a few more downward and directional lines to show wood grain more. Now these castle arts are quite chunky-ish. They don't come to a really fine point. So I am going to use a different brand of pencil for this last bit. I've just got, I've got a little set of drawers with some pencils in. It's going to be noisy. Right, this is a Prismacolor very thin and it is the dark brown and it's sharpened to quite a fine point. You can see how these sharpen very fine and I'm going to use it to put a few extra and thin lines on top if I can get it to rise. Yeah, I think it isn't as dark as I had expected. Let's see. No, it's not dark at all. It's actually lighter than the colour I used. Sorry, I'm making an awful lot of noise. This is a dark umber. Let me see. No, that's still not very dark. I'm going to use the black. Now, I bought this set because I couldn't afford Prismacolor. Well, I didn't buy them. I had them gifted to me by my parents, actually. I put them on my um, birthday Christmas list. So I'm actually going to use the black. And uh, they um, got them for me. So the set, I think there's 24. And uh, I just wanted to try out what these prisms were like. And I didn't realise these were so very, very different to the actual prisms. And so I haven't used them loads. You can see I've used the black a fair bit because it's not really long. It's been sharpened a bit because I tend to use it because of its really sharp point. Um, other, If you don't have these, a Stedler um, Norris might work. Ergosoft would probably work. Although it's soft, you can get it to a nice sharp point. Even a black polychroma might work better because the castle arts are quite soft, so they don't keep their points for very long. You can sharpen them to a point, but um, it's sort of, <coughs> excuse me, it disappears quite quickly. You just have to keep resharpening it. So uh, I quite like this one. I remember, um, talking to a coloured pencil artist and she used these for whiskers and um, eyelashes so she liked the really sharp points on them and the colours are compatible with the normal prisoners so they're exactly the same obviously there's only 24 as I said and obviously with prisoners 150 I think so but but all of the 24 there is an equivalent um, Prisma Premier is the other brand isn't it now I think a lot of people are disappointed when they order these because they expect them to be soft and smushy and they aren't but actually they are just a different tool that I I uh, you know very different to the prisms I find them easier to use than the Prisma Premier because they're not so smushy it's just not what I'm used to so uh, it's quite interesting now I was saying about doing the black bit in between each of these um, slats and I'm going to do that with this one as well. So I just want to re-emphasize this. I'm just going up and down a little bit over each line. Now what's going to happen is it's going to become less straight because I'm not very good at freehand lines but I don't mind because I think this, this is an organic product. It's made of wood. Wood moves 
and uh, so I'm quite happy with it being slightly wibbly wobbly and it isn't hugely you could use a ruler if you're worried um, do so um, I would have done um, my hands is getting better I'm getting stronger and more confident as well so uh, you know but do use a ruler if you're worried so I just popped my computer had gone to sleep I just popped it back on because my son I messaged him earlier but uh, see if he's replied to remind him he's got to do a few jobs at college at lunchtime he probably will, won't do it but I need him to pick up some Covid tests because they're running out in town I had to go to three different places to get one I thought maybe he should pick one up from college as well because we get through them quickly because all four of us do one so they only last a week or less than a week and we need another one <coughs> we haven't got any I don't think um, apart from what I grabbed so uh, and I thought if he gets to know where to collect them he can do it more often and I'm hoping I'll be able to use them because the reason I do them are, is because college asks for families to do them as well as the children so I always did when they were at school too I think it's only fair to the teachers to be honest although um, they might be jabbed they might not be able to be so uh, in fact one of them has been off but not with covid i'm going to re-emphasize this shadow as well um he's had the cold there's been a horrible cold going around the college i think there's been talk that the first winter cold has been much worse this year the children reckon it has been but actually i fought it off just as much as easily as i would normally but uh, they, they've still got quite a cough. My poor Sam was had to uh, was uh, sent off to get a COVID test because he was coughing so much in his one lesson. But uh, he was okay; he hasn't got COVID. We've had it anyway, so uh, we didn't think we were probably going to get it again. Right, let's do these veggies because they're quite fun and colourful. We don't really need to move that, do we? Um, now cabbage hmm cabbage is quite dark the leaves um let me think i think i'm going to start with the oxide of chrome and i'm going to um should we zoom in a bit for you now we're not doing a big area there we go and i'm going to go all over it in a light layer of this dark first because i think this is quite I mean, actually, cabbages come in all sorts of colours, but I'm thinking one of those dark winter cabbages. You might know what I mean if you're in the UK. A lot of people dislike cabbage, don't they? I um, I didn't like it as a child. I don't think many children did in my when I was a child. But they're much sweeter these days. OK, so we've done that basic. And what I want to do is try and emphasise the leaves the separate leaves so i want to put some darker green around the edge of each leaf like its um shadow so that we can see all these separate shapes and it'll help us to identify that it's a cabbage as well because we can see the separate leaves i am um, also think they might be a little bit darker at the bottom of each leaf so I'm just going to put a little bit of darker colour at the bottom of each one I was thinking I guess this box this veggie box would be called a container wouldn't it um, I think this colour I want to do I want to use the permanent green I think to sort of um, finish it off I'm just going to sharpen it getting really short but anyway look how little he is <sighs> anyway I'm gonna just do a bit darker at the bottom and then lighter towards the top and I think this will make it look prettier green colour I've gone so far out of the line hang on let's get our handy little Tombow mono eraser out and just just erase back 
Oh, our eraser is leaving a dirty mark on the page. Right, that's better. Okay, so we want to make sure it's a little bit darker still at the bottom, like we um, emphasize, try to emphasize with our dark. If you find that the contrast disappears, then you can go back in with a darker pen, pencil at the bottom again. I may do that, I'll see how it looks when I'm finished. You can also do a lighter green on the tops of these leaves, which again, I might do. Let's see how it all comes together. And I'm done. It's quite strange. My, I'm going to get, go back in with the darker one. My son was telling me about the sweet shop in the college they're at and uh, describing it to me. And then I said, oh, have they got any cough sweets? You know, cause people, it's quite nice if you have a coughing fit in a lesson, if you can have something to suck. I know cough sweets aren't really medicinal or anything, but, but, you know, they soothe the throat a little bit. If you've got a tickle, they're quite handy. He said, oh, I don't even know where the shop is. I wondered how on earth he knew what it looked like when he hadn't been in there. But anyway, maybe he found it once and never found it again. They haven't been there long. Okay, I'm going to do the top edge of each leaf in, in the leaf green light. But, uh, he said he didn't know. He said it's weird, it's in so-and-so block, I don't know where. I said, maybe it's just in a classroom. But anyway. He doesn't need to go there today. I, he needs to go and sort out. His calculator's broken. The screen isn't working properly. And he said, oh, it's been broken since I had it. And I said, well, can you take it back to the shop and tell them? I mean, they might just say, well, you've got to buy a new one. Um, I'm going to go back in with a permanent green just to sort of finish off a few bits, just to fuss around with it, really. But I think he should tell them it was broken when he got it. And they might be able to swap it for him. Or he might just have to get me to buy him a new one but I'd rather he just tried and talked to them about it first. Right I'm finished fiddling around. Oh, that bit looks a little bit light. There we go. I finished fiddling around with my cabbage and I've got to decide what everything else is. I'm definitely thinking these are carrots. Now my orange is really vibrant. I don't know if you remember how we used it up here for the apples and for this butterfly and Carrots aren't normally really, really bright orange, but I'm going to pop some orange down and uh, do a light layer. And then I'm going to go over it with this yellow ochre, which has got a slight brown tinge to it. And I think it might just make them look a bit more carroty. I'm going to go back over with orange, so don't worry, it doesn't look orange again now, does it? I need to sharpen them. Now these tufts on the top of the carrots, you know, they're just black. And I feel like we need some yellow in there. There we go. Some more muted orangey colour, I think that looks better. Anyway, it's up to you to see what you think. So what I'm going to do is grab my permanent green and I'm going to just put some green about here, like that. Let's add some bits and bobs of green. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, what are these two? Go on, shout out, I'll listen. Parsnips? Okay. Um, now, parsnip is a white, slightly creamy white. So I'm going to um, go for a golden yellow. And it's actually not really a creamy white. I'm going to press really lightly and just try to very slightly colour it. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Just a tickle. <laughs> golden yellow. Now the tops I've got no idea, can't remember, so I'm just going to grab a sap green, that okay, needs a sharpen, everything always does doesn't it? Okay, now these leaves 
look to me like they want to be darker in the bottom and lighter at the top, like um, the gooseberry ones that we did. But I'm only going to use one colour because it's quite a small space. And also I want them to look different to other leaves that we've done. A few tips with greens. If you haven't got many greens, you can make greens from blue and yellow. But if your blending um, isn't well practiced or your pencils don't blend well, that doesn't always work very nicely. So what I find is better is if you put some blue under green or yellow on top of green or mix greens together you get a better um, selection of new green colours than if you just try and mix yellow and blue but do experiment it as I say it will depend on your pencils as to what will work best okay what are these two if those were turnip parsnips is it a turnip Turn it doesn't look like that. I don't know. Um, there are some things that have a slightly reddish and whitish colour. That's a Swede, it's not that. Eek. Um, let's do them as carrots again. More carrots. Different type of carrot with a whole different top. So remember, light layer of orange light layer of yellow ochre and another light layer of orange of course carrots come in all sorts of different colours we could have done a yellow carrot or a purple carrot couldn't we but too late now it is done now what colour for the top of this um, um, we've used that we've used that we've used that Let's go for the, let me use that for there, um, mm, I don't really want that colour, um, let's go with the oxide of green, it's quite dark, if it's too dark we'll um, lighten it with something. And it's quite a small space, I'm not going to be too fussy about how I fill it, I'm just going to go for it. There, I think that'll do. Okay, now we've got our labels. Now I'm thinking wooden stick in a yellow ochre. It's a different colour wood to the um, box, which I think is good. Now here we have bits and dots and things, which I think we need to acknowledge. You can use this really light leaf green light. And I'm just going to do a little bit of colouring here, just of these bits there. Okay, let me see. Gosh, it's suddenly gone really dark here, like it's about to pour with rain. Oh, now the sun's come back out. Oh well, UK weather, huh? There we are. Um, I think I'm going to leave that there. I'm certainly going to do another picture, um, another video I mean, and we will do, um, we've still got a fair bit to cover, so whether we do it all in one or if it goes into two will just depend on how long it takes me. But I hope you're enjoying this little mini series of pictures, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and happy colouring. <laughs>